A while back on this channel, I talked about Presto Player, and Presto Player is a, probably one of the better uh, video player plugins for WordPress. It's it's aimed at people who are doing more professional things with their websites, and so it's got a lot of cool features. Now, version 2.0 that was recently released, their big reveal was the playlist feature. And the thing is, not a lot of people have talked about the playlist feature. I'm not sure so many people are using it yet. I honestly don't know the answer to that. But one of the main videos out there talking about it was from Adam, who was talking about actually using the playlist feature because he he's the guy who's behind it. Um, but it was um, one of those things to where I think he was showing it in its ideal setup, and it was very simple. So what I wanted to do here is record a quick video showing some things, basically some things that could be improved about the playlist feature, because I think this could be... A, a, a really, really awesome feature of Presto Player. And, and I want to be clear, I'm not bashing the software here in any way. I, I like Presto Player. It's just that there's some things that I think could be done to increase its usability to put it up on a whole other level. And it's a little hard for me to describe it in words. So I figured let's go ahead and just record a quick video. <laughs> So here we are with a, a, a test player that I created. Now this is actually for one of my uh, older courses at the Blog Marketing Academy called AWeber Essentials. And this particular one has 13 videos. Uh, I've been doing it inside of LearnDash. However, ideally I'd actually would like to move all these things into a simpler setup. And so I'd like to make a lot of usage of the playlist feature of Press to Player. But and it can be done. I managed to build this one, uh, but it was a real pain in the butt. And in fact, I've got it set up in, in a more uh, professional way on an actual course page that I created with the titles all right and everything. But but you can see it's a real nice setup they got here. And it has this Netflix style uh, thing where it'll end up on, it'll finish one video and then it'll kind of have a little progress thing, how it's getting ready to show the next one and then it'll automatically advance. It's nice. I, I mean, it's really the best execution of a playlist that I've seen. I haven't seen anything better than this. The thing is, building it is a real pain in the butt. It really is. And I do think that what Adam was presenting in his video was idealistic. Uh, because in the real world, when you're trying to set these things up, it is a real pain to do it. Okay. Um, so the, first of all, if we go over to this page edited in the Gutenberg, um, it's you'll notice how I did set the color to be black and everything, and it's not showing up that way. It's it's interesting, and I don't know if that's a bug or what. I'm using the cadence theme. I know that I could overwrite it with some custom CSS, but it is what it is. But you, but when you go to add these videos to the playlist, um, it's really like you you scroll down. You add it, this thing, oh, actually, so this is actually a problem. I'm going to have to fix this real bit quick and come back. I have a snippet on my site, which is actually filtering my search results so that I don't show every post type in my search results. And unfortunately, this drop down in here is affected by that search filter. I had to go disable it. Otherwise, this thing does not show actual media hub entries. So let me go fix that. It's kind of annoying. Okay, so I went ahead and removed that snippet, and I've also deleted the blocks. What we're going to do is we're going to start actually trying to create one from scratch. Let's do Presto Playlist, and we got to add our first media. Now, the first thing is I've got 13 videos here. I've had to name them in a particular way here so I can even find them. And the other issue is that the drop down only goes back so far. So if you have a large list of things in your media hub, this dropdown is gonna be a real pain in the butt to use. Um, it, it, there's no a way to filter it by media tag or anything like that. So I really feel like this is a thing and it got really annoying. Um, like I have to know what my video was called manually so I can go find it because I can't go find it in the dropdown. It won't go past the fourth video here, even though I've got three, two, and one, and I've got other Media Hub entries in here as well. So uh, I think it's called intro. Yeah, there it is, number one. So let's just add that. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add another one. It doesn't go down anymore. Let's uh, let's go, to, I actually don't even know what my number two is. Um, A Weber Essentials. Um, two, 
Ah, there it is, okay. But you see how much work this is to build? And I, I'd have to do this 11 more times because there's 13 of them. So one thing that would be really nice is if, it, if I could multi-select in some way in order to add these things to the playlist. But the other thing that's, that it is definitely an issue is that I, I'm limited to the Media Hub. And I, I sort of understand why I'm limited to the Media Hub. If we go over to this tab, here's the Media Hub. It's, 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 a, it's clunky. And that's because, you know, I'm connected to my bunny.net account. I should be able to, and it's really great, actually, how Presto Player communicates with that really nicely. I can select my videos out of, out of uh, bunny.net. But the thing is, uploading it to bunny.net is not enough. I have to also manually add every single individual video to this media hub so that I could even select it in that drop down that I just showed you in order to build the playlist. And it, it, so it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And the other thing too is because that drop down that I showed you over here is just very, very limited. I, I have to either remember what every Media Hub entry is called so I can manually search for it, or I have to have some weird naming convention on there so I have any hope of finding it. There's just no way to to organize this dropdown. It's limited to like 10 things. Um, it, I can't filter it. And so it's it's really hard to actually build a playlist. You can imagine, this is just one course for AWeber Essentials, but I've got a bunch of them. And you can imagine how clunky this is going to get when I start trying to actually use this playlist function for actual online courses. Um, when I go to add something to the Media Hub, every single one of these has to be done manually. I've got to type some name here. I go to Bunny. Wait for it to load. That's just my site. There it is. I mean, here's the course. I've got it nicely inside of bunny.net. It's beautiful. Why? I mean, it'd be nice if I could just multi-select all these bad boys and just add them to the Media Hub in one fail swoop, but I can't do it. So I have to do one at a time. Choose. It's it's like I'm all I'm doing is creating a, a, a database entry, and it's very, very repetitive. Um so one of the proposed solutions was that they could have some kind of a bulk import option, uh, and that would be nice. I mean, if I could do a multi-select situation and just say, add all these things to the Media Hub all at once, that would be nice. Frankly, my first reaction with Presto Player was, why the hell are they bothering with a Media Hub? I, I don't understand it, but I do now. I mean, I get it. They want to be able to have these short codes and the PHP functions, and they want to be able to, and, and they need to track analytics on these videos and stuff. They need to have a database entry for that. Makes sense. You also want these the flexibility to be able to work with things that are not Gutenberg. Like so if you're using Elementor or any other piece of software that may not even have a direct integration with Presto, you want to be able to have a way of getting it in there. So obviously the short code is, is a good catch-all. So it, the Media Hub thing, I, I get why it's necessary. It just could be easier to utilize when you're in a situation where you've got a lot of videos. Like if you, like I would like to be able to use Presto Player as a full-on alternative to Vimeo Pro and just cancel Vimeo Pro. And I may do that anyway, but to be honest, getting all these videos in here is going to be a, it's going to test my patience majorly uh, because I have to put everything into this media hub one by one. It's just, it's just aggravating. So a, a real, um, a bulk import of some type would be really, really handy here. Um, some way to make that more of a streamlined situation. And then I want to talk about this playlist functionality because dragging it in as a Gutenberg block, it's fine, but it really only works very well if um, you don't have that many videos. And what, but here's the other thing is like, what if you want to reuse this? It's just in there as a Gutenberg block on one particular page. So one thing that I think would be really nice that they do would be that we could manage these playlists kind of like we manage Media Hub entries, like make it a custom post type. We have a dedicated interface where we can build our own playlists 
okay? And we could just bulk select the things that we want to add to it. And we do it on a different screen. And then the playlist itself would have a short code or a, say a, a function that says presto underscore playlist and we could give it an ID number. And then we can utilize that playlist anywhere we please. It'll be it, the, the Gutenberg block. We don't have to literally build the playlist in the Gutenberg block. We could just drag in and say, sh tell me what playlist to show up because we will have already built the playlist. I think it would be a lot easier, okay? And one other thing too, I wanna make a mention of while I'm here, the Media Hub, it would be nice if we had a real interface for this that was dedicated to Presto Player and not forcing us to use Gutenberg because it's really odd loading up Gutenberg and having things disabled. It, this is To me, this seems like a really awkward setup. Like you can't add anything else, but then there's all the other crap here. Like here's the stuff for cadence, even though it's not even applicable. Like it's because we're loading up the full Gutenberg setup here. Like why not just have a dedicated interface where we could box or you know set up a video and and add the and choose the things and we don't have to open up Gutenberg to do it. And same thing with that with the playlist function. If we could add a custom post type for the playlist themselves. I don't want to have to build it in the Gutenberg setup ideally. I mean, I will if we need to, but um, it's just using Gutenberg to just create a Media Hub database entry. It seems like you could just cr have it look more like a the classic editor setup in WordPress where we just enter a title, hit a button, select what video we want to add in there, boom, have a have a have some uh, custom fields there so we can choose our our player options and all that. It doesn't need to be sitting there inside of the Gutenberg builder. So that's just one other thing. So that's mainly it. I want I want to see Presto Player get a heck of a lot more useful, more utilitarian for real world usage. I mean, the most basic usage of that playlist functionality is probably going to be online courses, I would imagine. That's how I'd like to use it. Um, I actually would, ha we would be kind of happy to stop using LearnDash um, and get rid of the bloat associated with it and just have one page simple courses uh, with, with the playlist in there. But it's just the way that the playlist functionality works right now with version 2.0 um, is tedious to use. It's like you've got the, the code in there to make the playlist look nice. It's just the actual real world usage of building those playlists is just really tedious and it's just too idealistic. And I, I think it hasn't yet seen a lot of real world use by people like myself who actually want to utilize it for stuff. It's just, it's more theoretical at the moment. So anyways, I'd like to see it get a little bit better. I figured it might be helpful to show it to you. If you are looking to use Presto Player, uh, just realize that the playlist functionality that was just released with version 2.0 is pretty new. And so you can't, it's not, I mean, it, it is what it is. I just showed you its limitations. But in terms of, it, uh, of, of the functionality of Presto Player, I'm still a big fan. It really works nicely um, for, uh, for one-off videos. It does a great job with that. Um, and, um, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot there. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great player. I do recommend it. And in fact, if you're using Vimeo Pro and that type of stuff right now, I think getting a bunny.net account and then using Presto Player to actually uh, show your videos, I think it's going to save you a lot of money. You're going to have a lot more um, control. Bunny.net is actually a great system, great platform. I should probably make some videos about that one too. Um, and it should save you some money because I last I looked, I think Vimeo Pro is like 240 bucks a year. And it's so it's not that expensive, but it, it's not nothing. Uh, Bunny.net is probably going to be much simpler because it's pay for what you use. It's, it's not a flat rate situation. It's ultimately going to be a heck of a lot cheaper. And the Presto Player is a good platform for it. It just doesn't rock with playlist yet. And I'd love to see it get there so that I can utilize it to its full potential. All right, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about Presto Player, uh, feel free to hit me up and I can get back to you. And if you're uh, one of the guys behind Presto Player and you want some other feedback, uh, I, I'd be happy to help. My, my goal here is just to help the software get better. All right, talk to you guys soon.